welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Katie, I'm a mixed media artist and in today's video I'm going to be talking all about my new favourite medium which is pan pastels. As a mixed media artist I use a lot of different materials and I don't tend to use things on their own. I like to mix and match with gouache, acrylic paint, neo colours, pencils and now pan pastels. So in today's video I'm going to be sharing how I mix them with brush pens, gouache and then on their own and layering other mediums over the top. There are obviously a lot of ways you can use different art supplies and I know that I don't use these pan pastels in a conventional way. Like I said I'm not someone who tends to just use the one medium so although you can create beautiful artwork with just the pan pastels and lots of lovely blending that's not personally how I work and so I just want to share that and if you're a mixed media artist or want to use them in a different way I hope this video gives you some inspiration. I really don't think that there should be rules with art supplies, so if you're enjoying your process, then just go ahead and use them however you like. So with that being said, we're going to jump right in with process number one and sharing the method of using pan pastels and brush pens. So this was my first mixed media experiment with pan pastels since I bought them, and I was definitely quite light-handed with these. But it really taught me a lot and you'll definitely see as I go through these panels that I gained more confidence in how to use them over the brush pens. So I'm using Tombow ABT dual brush pens here, but it also works with any other brands. I've also used them since with Ecolines. I'll pop some pictures up on the screen showing some landscapes that I've done using this method where the whole base is done with brush pens, including Ecolines and Tombows and then a more heavy hand of pan pastels over the top. And you can see it really creates a lot of blending and softness. Whereas in this piece here, I'm mostly using it to create distance and depth. So like I mentioned at the beginning, there's so many different ways that you can use them. So this is a good example of that. And you can use them sparingly or as a really big part of the piece. So like I said, I'm just laying down my base layer with the brush pens. I'm coming in with a little touch of pastels, so I first used the beige one at the top and then the paint spray over that, and it kind of made it a bit dirty, it wasn't quite the effect I was going for, but it was a misty sort of day on the reference, so it did add a lot of atmosphere to the piece and I think pan pastels are really good for that. And then down here on the second panel, I'm adding in a bit more refinement with the pastels simply by using the little eyeshadow applicator so this is for makeup and I've just been using makeup sponges to apply my pan pastels because they were super cheap and I found them to work really nicely. So I added on the blue to the sky here in this piece as well as the beige and then the yellow ochre and I really love the warmth that that adds. And then the next one is a beach scene so again I'm going in with my brush pens if you did want to know any specific shade names, do let me know in the comments and I can find that out for you. I love using brush pens when I don't want to get my paints out and it's a really quick way to put down a lot of colour. So especially when I'm working plain air, I tend to take a pencil case full of brush pens and pencils because I find them really versatile. So this one had like a sunset so I've added on some pastel to the sky. And I tried the brush pen over the top here, but it does dry it out, so I wouldn't recommend it. And you can see where it wasn't quite dry. When I'm adding the pastel over the top, it really sticks on some of the areas, so you can see that there. Which is a cool effect if you want it, it does add more texture. So I'm on to the last panel now. These panel spreads are some of my favourites to fill my sketchbook. You'll probably have seen them a lot if you've been on my channel before. And it just feels like a really nice way to create and practice different landscapes. It's a really nice way to bring different references together and use the same medium but fill a spread with them. And it was a really nice way for me to practice the blending with the pan pastels. So again, I'm coming in with my brush pens and creating the base. And then this one, I feel like I really nailed the distance. I'm putting it not all over the whole image so I'm really trying to create the distance by pushing and pulling things back. So I keep the foreground plain as it is with the, the brush pens and then the coloured pencil details over the top so including the little blades of grass and I'm mostly using the Tombow Eroger 10 pencils and Luminance for that. And then for the background so you can see it here 
I'm coming in with my sponge and especially with the beige one it really adds like a haze and a mist and it's such an easy way to create depth to the piece without actually doing much at all. I'm literally just applying this layer over the top so obviously because it's further away it's less focused and it does really create that distance. I definitely feel like I caught it with this one and it took the other three to really get to that point. But you can see uh, it does add a lot of texture so where I was using it with my more bold landscape pieces it adds a really nice softness to the piece and really blends everything out. So if you want to see a process for that one there is a tutorial over on Patreon but I can also do a speed run of that here on YouTube if you're interested. At the end of these I'm sharing some little close-ups but we are moving on to the next process which is using pan pastels and gouache. So as usual I'm using a mix of Winsor Newton and De La Rowney gouache and then I've got my pan pastels ready to go over the top. I've primed my sketchbook page. This is actually done with acrylic paint, so I've put down a base of pink acrylic. This was mixed with house paint, so white house paint and then some red, just because it's a really affordable way to use a lot of paint. And I sometimes prep my pages beforehand with this method because it creates a really warm, soft base to work on top of. So I've mixed up some really pale pastel shades with the gouache, and I'm just starting to layer up and build up the painting. The reference image is like a misty sort of woodland scene, so again I'm going to be using the pan pastels as an extra device to really add that atmosphere to the piece, and again create depth. So I'm being quite loose with my brushes, as usual I haven't sketched or anything, and I really enjoy just finding the shapes with my brush and using it in a really loose way because I think that's what I'm after, I don't want it to be super tight and obviously I can keep working and adding in more media to build up more details and that's the way I prefer to work. So I'm coming in here with the pan pastels so I'm the way that I work is quite intuitive and I'll come in and out with my mixed mediums. I don't have a set method of using just paint and then pan pastels and then pencils. I'll often swap and interchange between them depending on what I feel the piece needs and I think that's a really important way to work as a mixed media artist. So I'm coming in here with lots of layers. When I add on this burnt sienna to the bottom, it really brought it to life. I was so pleased with the pigment here and I think it's what it needed. I think it was looking too pale before, so this was a really nice way to add a lot of colour. And you can see I'm definitely more confident with the pan pastels compared to my first experiment with the brush pens. I'm also blending in this mustard yellow shade and that picks up really nicely with the greens from the bushes that I've drawn on and I really love the way it sort of blends it all together into one cohesive colour palette. It kind of sticks to some of the gouache and again I think that's a really nice effect but I do think you have to wait until it dries otherwise it might ruin your sponges and the pan pastel won't work on top as well. I had a couple of comments about working on top of the pan pastels with paint and I found that it's been absolutely fine with my gouache but I do use it here quite thickly so I'm not trying to do a wash again. I think if you were trying to do another layer over the top of really washy marks and like trying to keep it transparent it would pick up the pastels and then there would be no point putting it down but it might be something that you can experiment with because I have seen some people use pan pastels with water before and I think it gives a totally different effect. So now I've put on the tree layer, which was with gouache. I'm coming in with some more pan pastel just to soften the background. And then coming in again with more gouache to add in the leaves. And I'm just doing a mix of green shades here. So to add on my details layer, which is my favourite part. This one didn't need as much, but I am coming in with some green and brown pencils. Just to define some of the trees and the leaves in the sky. And add some more texture to those trunks. So at this point it's a perfectly fine painting, I really like the colour palette and the boldness of that orange ground. This was a very autumnal painting and I think that really brought out the colours. But it does feel like it needs a bit more, so I keep coming in with more texture including some from these near colours, which is always my go-to for adding on more details and adding my usual signature scribbles all around the page. 
but I do think it needed something else and so that's where the pan pastels will come in just to add another layer of sort of haziness and depth again. It worked really nicely over all of these mediums, I didn't have a problem of it going over the neo colours at all and I'm just going in with the beige again and trying to avoid the trees where they are in the foreground but obviously it's quite hard to do especially with these larger brushes. I don't have um, very small ones, I know you can get the ones from the tools from the pan pastel website which would work well but here I've gone over the tree so I'm just going to come back in later which you'll see with a neo colour just to clean that up a bit because I really wanted to push back the background and by adding this soft beige colour it really helped with that and obviously it wouldn't have that effect if I kept the foreground covered with it as well. So here's some close-ups, it's definitely harder to see on some of these but I really love the depth that it creates, I think it added a lot of atmosphere and haze to this piece. So now we're moving on to the next medium which is basically everything, it's pan pastels and mixed media. But for this one I worked with the pan pastels alone first, so most of my pieces that I've been creating the past few months have had a base first, whether that's with gouache, acrylic or brush pen. Whereas with this one I'm just creating the base with pan pastels, so again a totally new technique for me and I'm just using this on some smooth watercolour paper and again coming in with my makeup sponges and just blending them in together. I don't have a huge amount of pan pastels but the ones I do have I feel like work really well with my landscapes and the nature subject I usually create and again I think it worked nicely here. I think the only one that I'm kind of missing or feel like I could do with is a soft blue but if you have any pan pastels do let me know your favourite colours because I definitely do want to expand my collection now I know that I really enjoy using them and I think that's something that I always recommend is starting small and working your collection up rather than going off and buying a huge multi-pack of these pan pastels I think it works if you buy one or two at first and then build up from there which is how I started my collection. They are quite expensive but you do get a lot of pigment in there and I don't think it runs out very quickly. So I'm coming in with acrylic ink here so now I've done my base with the pan pastels I'm going to try painting on the top. I'm mixing up from the green, yellow and red to create a really nice warm green so I find that the red really makes it seem more natural so I always add in some red to my green shades. Now I'm coming in with a round brush and drawing on some really organic shapes. Again I haven't sketched first so I just sort of go with the flow here. I'm mixing in some more of the bold colours which haven't been completely mixed because I really love the effect that that gives. I'm really into texture in my work at the moment as you can probably tell and so I really love the blending effect that this gives and I did find that the acrylic ink sank into the page but that's more to do with my paper stock and it is smooth because I prefer to work with smooth paper but it would create a totally different texture if you're using pan pastels on rough or cold pressed paper. I'm leaning into my messy artist phase and using my fingers here just to add more texture. I really wanted this piece to be very vibrant and full of interest. So I'm adding in texture from coloured pencils, the acrylic ink, using my Neo colours and the Stabilo Woody pencils as well, which layer really nicely on top of a lot of different mediums and I'm still absolutely loving. I'm creating more difference in line by using the Neo colours back and forth to create a very rough line rather than just doing it in one fell swoop and I think that gives a really nice organic look as well. So I'm using this piece as a background and putting on a greenhouse frame over the top. If you've seen lately on Instagram as part of my daily art challenge, I'm creating a series of greenhouses because I want to create a print with this theme. So I've been doing a lot of experiments based on greenhouses and trying out different ways to create them. And this was one of those experiments. So you'll see the final close up at the end I've placed on a collaged greenhouse frame which I cut from white paper strips. So this served as the base for that and I really loved the way that it turned out. I was really pleased with this piece. It felt very sort of abstract for me. It was very different but I really enjoyed creating it. My usual method would be to use paint for the base but 
I really enjoyed the softness that the pan pastel gave and I didn't have any problems working over the top with the acrylic ink or any of these mixed mediums that I'm placing on top now. The Stabilo woodies give a really nice strong pigment and the Neo colours as well worked lovely over the top. Again, I think if you were using sort of a really wet watercolour paint over the top it would pick up the pastel but the acrylic ink worked perfectly fine and again I think acrylic paint works as well. So I'm coming in with even more medium here to add on even more texture and my trademark little lines and things but one thing I did want to know is obviously they are very messy. I definitely smudged a lot of areas here on the border but it comes off really well with an eraser so you can just rub away any of the smudges and marks and it cleans it up super nicely. So this is the final greenhouse piece. You can see there that it does go over the greenhouse and I really like that effect. Adding on the frame made it feel more whimsical, it really plays with a sense of scale, so definitely something I'm going to explore more. So that's the final outcome from the mixed media experiments, and now here's me with a little roundup. So I hope that video was useful and you enjoyed seeing my process for those three different pieces. There are definitely loads of ways that you can use them, intermixing with acrylics even, and loads more materials, but I just thought I would start with the three and share how I've been developing my process and creating more texture in my work now I'm using pan pastels more often. If you have any ideas for future videos or want to see me create with these pan pastels, please do let me know down in the comments. But I hope this video was useful and that it gave you some inspiration. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next week with a new video. See you later.